a time when we should talk or slap from prayer? Is there ever a time when all that needs to be said unto the Lord has been said? Before worship, between worship services, we are impacted by things that happen in our midst and sometimes far away. This week, I'm sure you were impacted as was I when you heard of the massacre of children, teachers, administrators, and connections. I read a Facebook posting. A young man wrote, said, I don't want to appear harsh, but people get killed every day. I don't see no reason to make all this fuss about those children that were killed. Well, my fingers were short right away. And I posted on his wall. Man that is born of a woman is but of a few days tall and trouble. He fled as it were a shadow. Man that is born is going to suffer in this life and at the end of life, God's plan is that we die a natural death. That's the will of God. But when a person is shot, when a person is bludgeoned, when a person is stabbed, that is a sin, that is a crime, that is not a God. And when we get to the point where we are dry, when we cannot even consider the loss, the children that were lost, the parents that don't have those little eyes and little feet running across the floor, those children who are anticipating the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, we have become callous and do not care, for we cannot feel. One child destroyed by a senseless act of violence is too many. But I know that the scripture tells me that these things will increase at even as the days of the Lord's coming draw near. Should we be concerned? Yes. Because we are concerned. I know that many of you stop in your daily routine and were sorrowful and prayed. Many of you hugged your own children when they came home from school or you reached out with just a sigh of relief as doors were open and your neighbor's children came home. There was a shooting in Allentown last week. A girl was shot. Amen. But she yet is alive. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. But depending on the numbers that you get, a young man killed his mother first. Probably with one of her own weapons that he also took to the school. Now, Sister Naomi, we don't use biblical language anymore. We say wax. Took him out. Blew him away. Went into a school and killed he who is perceived as a leader. Then he began to go around and take the lives of kindergarten and first grade students. That is a crime. It is a tragedy. We call what happened to General George Armstrong Custer at the Battle of Little Bighorn on a massacre. But that was open warfare. Now, I want, to be, I want to encourage you to know that children have <coughs> angels. And these children, even though they had not reached that age of consent <coughs> or when their eyes were open, we believe, according to the teachings of Jesus, that they will not be charged as sinners and are welcomed into the arms of a loving God. Somebody ought to say amen. Oh, you didn't learn that in your baptism. You didn't learn that in your vacation Bible school, but it's in the scripture. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. But we yet need to consider their parents and, as we say all the time, the survivors. Yes. And we are among the survivors. Yes. Fathers, love your children. Yes. 
mothers, love your children. Love your husbands. Love one another and give thanks that we have this circle today to come together in prayer. Knowing that we too are of a few more days of toil and trouble. And we pray the Lord's protection and perfection. So that when we leave this earth, it'll be by natural causes. Amen. But even if it doesn't happen that way, we will yet be saved. Rise now. Considering these things. And come to the altar and let you pray. It is the third Sunday in the Advent season of 2012. We look forward to the coming of a righteous Lord and Savior who will come and redeem the earth and receive his own to himself. Though we wait for his sudden and soon coming, we acknowledge the presence of him right here and among us now. St. James A.M.E.'s High and Church, rise to your feet, for truly the Lord is in his holy temple. Together, the Lord is. Thank you. 
Now, I don't know a child that asks for a, an empowering or a perfecting gift. They want what they didn't get last year. They want something that makes them feel good or feel special. You see, when children are elevated to being teens, uh, we stop telling them what they need and we start asking them what they want. And then as they ask, uh, tell us what they want, dolls and dollhouses are replaced uh, by electronics and jewelry on their Christmas list. And when you turn from asking to telling me what you want me to buy for you, it's time for you to get a job and go pass it what 
the sky, a manifestation in the shape of a man or some other being, but is born unto you. He comes through the movement. Uh, Paul writes in Galatians uh, 4 and 4, for when the fullness of time is come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, made under the law. That is, Jesus, the God-man, came into the earth. He was born and subject to the same things as you or I. If you're born in the flesh, you are subject to bacteria. You're subject to viruses. You're subject to, to, to good and bad teaching. You're subject to emotional strain, physical strain, disease, and pestilence. Jesus was born just as we are, but he is the God-man. God wrapped in mortal flesh. And he is born in the city of David. The city of David is so important because it was this city, Bethlehem, Bethlehem Ephrata, where the Savior was prophesied by Micah, whom we examined last week in Micah 5 and 2, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was in a fruitful region of Judea. Bethlehem means house of bread. Ephrata means fruitful ground or fruitful place of habitation. That is, into this fruitful place where there is bread, where there is food for all of the people. God would send and birth unto us the bread of life. And he is a Savior. And he is Christ the Lord. The new life that is born is the gift of God that will be our Savior. He is your individual Savior. Yes, unto you, the individual, but yes, unto you, the corporate body. The Savior is born, and the Savior as the gift of God is given. He is your Savior. Yes, He is. And even more, He is the Savior of His people Israel. And even more, He is the Savior of all of mankind. The Savior born in Bethlehem comes according to the word of God spoken by his faithful prophets. He is the one that the world awaited, had been taught to pray as they awaited. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. He would be moved from the earth to the cross, our debt of sin to pay. He would do all that the Father would send him to do. And we glory that God did what he said, the way that he has promised, because according to that, we also are blessed if, if we receive the gift properly, love it, adore it, and put it to use in our lives. Unto you is born a Savior that would teach and lead multitudes to trust and believe in God and in His Son through the word of the prophets and the revelation of the Holy Ghost. I can look at the scripture and even while you're praying, I'm looking at the word of God. I'm being fed and I see how that Jesus always acknowledged those who came before him. In other words, if you want to really understand, if you want to properly uh, accept Jesus, you got to remember what those of you who are here long enough to remember Cash has said. Those of you who are here and remember Kaiser. Those of you who are here and remember Wilson. Those of you who are here and remember Selby, and those of you who are here and remember those that came before them, you got to hook it all up before you get the full understanding. Amen. Beloved of God, Jesus gave credit to those who came in the Father's name before him, and then he said, if you believe the prophets, you should also believe in me. Amen. Beloved of God, and he came with instructions. I never gave a gift to any of my children and did not read the instructions or show them how to use it. Amen. In short, it cost too much. It was too valuable to put it in the hands of the immature without instructing them how to handle it. Number one, they could hurt themselves. How many people have hurt themselves and don't have a hope of eternity with God in heaven because they have mishandled the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ? How many of them will fall short of his glory because they only accept him as a rabbi, as a great teacher, or as a healer, or as a man who did good things? The only way to be in right standing with God the Father is accept the Son as our Savior. And Savior is who he is. Yes, he was a great teacher. Yes, he was a mighty man in scripture. Yes, he performed miracles. But he is also Messiah. 
And to acknowledge him as anything less than he is, is to lessen your standing with Almighty God. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he also meant by that that you cannot just say, I'm a good teacher and get in. you got to accept me the way that the Lord sent me. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, I've seen many things broken on Christmas and I've seen many dreams dashed and battered. But God gave us exactly what we need uh, to the shepherds outside of Bethlehem. God gave exactly what they needed to the people down in the city under Roman oppression. God gave exactly what they needed to the scribes and Pharisees. God gave exactly what they needed to a nation that is sick and getting sicker today. God has given exactly what we need and his name is Jesus. He is the sure Messiah, the anointed one of God, come to take away our sins. We are pleased that God has allowed you to share with us through this media ministry. But nothing will replace your being in place in the house of God. That is a house that teaches the word of God and encourages you to live a godly life. The writer of the book of Hebrews in chapter 10 verses 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that calls us. And let us consider one another. And provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some already is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We invite you to join us for our worship Sundays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Our church school from 9.30 to 10.45 on Sunday morning. Our midweek Bible studies, Wednesday, noon, and 7 p.m. for adults, and also a 7 p.m. Bible study for children and youth under the auspices of our Christian Education Department. We're looking to see you here. Please come soon and join the saints in praise. <laughs>